everyone. Thanks for listening to Wake Up, Look Up, a podcast where we connect events happening in real time to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Zach Wyrock. And this episode, we're talking about abuse of power. How can we stop this from happening? And it's taken from a story that was in the Washington Post recently. It's unfortunately an altogether familiar story of a man in power using his position, in this case, a police officer in South Bend, Indiana, using his position to begin an inappropriate relationship with a 16-year-old girl he met at a Chick-fil-A. It goes down the road you think it goes down. It's a story we've heard. And by the way, I don't want to pick on police officers because the truth is I could have found stories in the news about men that are pastors, men that are coaches. It really just a story of a man using his power and position to hurt a woman, in particular a woman who is underage. Uh, This story is devastating. And I don't want to lose the fact that a 16-year-old girl's life was forever altered. That, of course, is the most heartbreaking part of it. But what I've found in these stories is that there's a familiar refrain that happens. Uh, A woman is hurt, a child in this case. And then after the fact, we find ourselves saying, what could we do? What could we have done? How could we have stopped this? There's a lot of hand-wringing, but it's too late. I mean, those are good questions, but the damage has been done at that point. And I've been in rooms where men talk about these stories, and they have this kind of Wild West bravado about mounting up and taking care of any guy that ever tried this with their sister or their daughter or their wife. And I get those feelings. I understand them. But the thing is, these stories, I feel like, are not just about the abuse of power of a police officer or a pastor or a coach. It's about another group of men that abuse their power. They abuse their power as friends, as partners, as colleagues, as those who could have held this man accountable. I think it's a story of all of us failing as men. Because I'm 40 years old. I've been in locker rooms. I've been on golf courses. I've been in barber shops. The truth is we know the guys that are at risk here. We know the guys who make the inappropriate jokes, who push the comments too far, who comment on every woman who walks by regardless of her age and regardless of whether or not that man is married. And the truth is we understand that what these guys will say in front of us probably pales in comparison to what they're comfortable with when we're not around. But usually all we can mount is a little bit of a chuckle or a groan or a change of subject. And I think what these stories are telling us is that's not enough. Specifically, as Christian men, we bear the responsibility to protect the women in our lives, the women in our communities. And I'm tired of asking questions about protecting them after the damage is done. To be a Christian man, I think, in the barbershop, the golf course, the locker room, is to draw a hard line, is to tell that guy to shut his mouth, to tell him that he shouldn't comment on the 16-year-old cart girl who's serving drinks at the golf course, that that's way out of bounds and that it's not okay. I think the thing is, most of us know in those moments we lack the courage, but the lacking courage is what's contributing to these stories. In fact, in this particular story in South Bend, there was a moment where the wife actually reached out to another police officer, a friend of her husband's, and said, I'm worried about my husband. I think he's making destructive choices. I need somebody to tell him the truth, somebody to hold him accountable. And the other officer responded by saying, oh, I, I haven't seen anything. I don't believe him. I don't believe any of us. I think we do see. I think we do hear. I think we do know. And so in particular, in this episode, I'm aiming at two different kinds of men. First of all, probably statistically, heartbreakingly, there's a guy listening to this podcast who's flirting with this kind of decision, leveraging his position, leveraging his relationships to begin a relationship with a woman that he shouldn't, particularly even a woman who's underage. And I just want to caution you to stop. Not only are you going to damage this girl, you're going to damage yourself, your family, your friends. You're going to blow up the lives of everyone around you. It's evil. It's awful. No matter how many times you try to rationalize it, it isn't rational. Don't do it. But the second group of guys I have in mind, the main group of guys, are the rest of us who need to get over our cowardice, who need to acknowledge our own part in in creating a culture of silence around the men who prey on women. Speak up, draw hard lines, hold men accountable. It might come at your social cost, but better for you to pay the price than the 16-year-old girl who just wants to work at Chick-fil-A. Be better, and I'm speaking not just to you, but to myself. Hey, thanks for watching this video. 
Make sure you hit like and subscribe to get future content from Wake Up Look Up and from Christ Community Chapel. And while you're here, check out the other videos we have available.